got a really cool problem here today because this problem at first would intimidate a lot of people. Like you see the radical square root of x plus 13 minus the square root of x minus 3 equal to 2. And that's kind of scary because what we are might be trained to see like is this. You might be trained to see this kind of scenario where you just have a single radical. So then you start to go like, oh, I just square that and then I just go through my process and it's not too bad. But here... We can't exactly do that because I have the two radicals. So I can't just say like, well, I could maybe square this. Like maybe there's methods and in weird lines where it looks like that. But uh, I don't think that's going to be the cleanest way. So my first step here would be to just getting a radical by itself. Uh, so that means I'm going to add the square root of x minus 3. Now I'm sure there are multiple ways of going about this problem. I'll be honest. I'm sure there's multiple ways. I'm just going to explain this in a way that makes sense to me and how I would explain it in my class of like, here's how I would go about doing this. But please feel free to share what you would do to solve this type of problem because I would love to hear it. Uh, so since I'm moving over that square root of x minus 3, I'll be left with the square root of x plus 13 on this side. And then on the other side, I'll have 2 plus the square root of x minus 3. So I just moved it over. Now, since I've moved over the radical, I can square because I have a radical by itself, so at least I'm getting rid of a radical somewhere. Now, that doesn't mean that I'll have, I'll be completely getting rid of the radicals, because I'll still have a radical on the right side of the equation, because this is going to be multiplied out, I'm going to have to multiply this all out, and I'm going to be left with a radical somewhere. But at least I'm chopping it down a little bit. So when I do that, uh, the square root of x plus 13 squared is going to be x plus 13, like when you're taking the square root of 5. And you square the square root of 5, that's just 5. Alright, so now I, on the other side I have to do some work. I have the square, I'm sorry, the uh, 2 plus square root of x minus 3 times 2 plus square root of x minus 3. I will do this over here. 2 plus the square root of x minus 3 times 2 plus the square root of x minus 3. And I know some people would just be able to doom, boom, boom. You know exactly what that is. But I'm just going to explain everything fully here. So what I'm doing is I'm doing 2 times 2, 2 times the square root of x minus 3, square root of x minus 3 times 2, square root of x minus 3 times the square root of x minus 3. So I'm just multiplying everything together. You could do FOIL. I, I don't necessarily like FOIL. I just like thinking of it as, as the distributive property twice. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 2 times square root of x minus 3 is going to be 2 square root of x minus 3 plus, and then I have 2 again, square root of x minus 3, plus, and then I have this square root of x minus 3 times square root of x minus 3, which is going to be x minus 3. I knew it. The spacing was all off. That's okay. Um, let's, I kind of have a lot going on here, so let me just rewrite everything. So right now, without simplifying anything, I'm going to have 4 plus 2 square root of x minus 3, plus 2 square root of x minus 3, and those are going to be like terms, plus x minus 3. But I just want to show you a couple things here. Now from here, I can combine like terms, so I'm going to do 2 square root of x minus 3 plus 2 square root of x minus 3. So that's going to get 4 uh, square root of x minus 3. So okay, I'm going to combine those together. Now what I also can do is I have 4 minus 3 here. So these are like terms also. 4 minus 3. That's going to be 1. Notice one thing left over, though, which seems kind of scary. This x. You see this plus x over here, and you're like, uh-oh, that might cause an issue. But look, if I subtract x from both sides, look what happens. 0, 0. That's very nice, because now we don't have an extra variable roaming around somewhere causing any sort of issues. So that means I'm going to be left with 13 on this side, and then I already said 4 minus 3 is 1, so I'll have 1, and then I combine the like terms, 2x, 2 uh, square root of x minus 3 plus 2 square root of x minus 3 is going to be 4 square root of x minus 3. And then that's it on that side, because I did the 4 minus 3 is 1, I got rid of that x. Now it's looking a lot nicer. Now it's looking like a problem that we might be able to do... Um, from here. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. 13 minus 1 is 12 equals 4 square root of x minus 3. And then from here, I'm going to divide by 4. So right now, it's just like, okay, everything's falling into place here. 
12 divided by 4 is 3 equals the square root of x minus 3. From all of that, we got it down to just 3 equal the square root of x minus 3. Now I can square both sides because I want to get rid of that square root. So I'm going to square both sides. 3 squared is 9 equals square root of x minus 3 squared is going to give us back just x minus 3. I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and I get the solution of x equal to 12. x equals 12. Wouldn't it be the worst idea in the world to check? Uh, I, I think maybe I'll just double check, just uh, you know, for the fun of it. So let's see. Uh, 12 plus 13 minus the square root of 12 minus 3 equal to 2. So let's see. Square root 12 plus 13 is 25 minus square root 12 minus 3 is 9 equal to 2. Square root 25 is 5. Square root 9 is 3 equal to 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 equals 2. We did it. We have solved this problem. Checks out. So x equals 12 on that one. And again, I think this problem is more intimidating than the difficulty actually is. I don't think this is a difficult problem. I think you might look at it and not really know where to start. But once you just start maneuvering some things and just think like, okay, well, if I know that I, if I square this when it's equal to something, like if I just had the problem as I wrote down at the beginning, do I have it still written? No, I think I erased it. If I just had x plus 13 equal to five and I square that, we'd be able to solve that. Like that problem right there, you'd be able to start maneuvering through your way through that, no problem. So just think of that. Just, just try to find like what part of it are you understanding, what part of it are you struggling with, and then just try to move, move some things around. Like If it hits a dead end, then just go back to the beginning and try something else. But I think once you see that those patterns start to develop, that I could just get this by itself, I could square it, and then multiply this all out, you just have to be careful, and then you start to see just the dominoes falling into place here. Just everything just falling into place, and uh, you end up getting a nice clean answer. So it works out. It's a fun problem. I like that one.